Hello everyone, uh, Desert Gold here. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday, the day before Father's Day. Wishing all you guys out there that are fathers a happy and joyful Father's Day. Uh, today's subject is uh, actually a, technically a part two of a video I did uh, last year. Uh, crimping to crimp or not to crimp. So we'll call this to crimp or not to crimp version 2 or revisit it or whatever you want to call it. Um, lately I've been getting a lot of PMs and some comments, questions on, on that original video. It's kind of funny because these things seem to go in uh, sequence, uh, they seem to go in um, spurts. Uh, you won't get any feedback on a video for a long time and all of a sudden you get a flurry of questions on it so it's kind of hard to gauge what what people have questions on and so forth. Anyway, a lot of uh, recent questions um, concerning crimping are uh, referencing different types of pistol rounds i.e. 45, 9mm. Um, and the questions are usually pretty much the same. They, uh, they always seem to reference somebody saying that uh, uh, you need to crimp using a factory crimp on a 45 ACP or a, a 9mm. And um, technically that is partially true, but you have to understand what they're they're talking about there. The main thing that I've always said is that um, semi-automatic rounds always seat off the case mouth, so that is the important area of your sizing and reloading um, that you want to pay attention to. And I began to wonder and think about it for a little bit and I was thinking that maybe some people might not really understand what that means. Um, there are two ways that most rounds, if not all rounds actually, um, are held in place in the firing chamber. Uh, it's either at the base, case web area, bottom or the case mouth. I'll bring this around and I'm sure all you guys are kind of familiar with reloading and obviously this is the case mouth of a 10 mil. Actually it's a 40 Smith & Wesson. Duh. Okay. What is case mouth seating, uh, how is it important, and why do you need to pay attention to it? Without getting into excessive, boring details about um, head spacing and chamber seating and all of that, I'm going to try and just briefly touch on it so that you get an idea of what, what it is without giving you a excessively long and drawn out reloading session. So what is uh, head spacing? Head spacing is the actual seating of the round in the chamber ready for firing. Um, if the round is seated properly the weapon will discharge and will feed properly. If the round is not headspace properly, then you will get failure to feed, you will get jamming, you'll get uh, a myriad of uh, issues with uh, chambering the round. So let's, let's get a, a quick idea of what that means. Um, first off, if you are into reloading, um, 
I'm sure you probably have some of these. If not, you should probably get some if you're going you know, to continue to get uh, stay in or get more involved in reloading. And here's a perfect example. I was reloading some 6.8s a little while ago, and um, uh, this is the what they call a case gauge uh, for the 6.8 SPC. This one happens to be put out by Wilson Combat. Very, very nice case gauge for that. Very accurate. And basically, what this was, what this does is let you know with a necked cartridge that um, you have it sized properly and the uh, seating depth will be accurate for the caliber that you're reloading. So basically what this is is a representation of a 6.8 SPC chamber. And on, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but on the top you'll see indentation or a ridge on both sides and a valley in the middle. And basically what that indicates is depending on where the case sits when you put it in, if you've got it sized properly and headspace properly, you will see that um, it's a perfect and it's headspace perfectly with the uh, case gauge. Now what happens if you don't have it sized properly? Now with neck cartridges the shoulder area is the important part. This is where the um, case spaces in, the, in head spaces in the um, chamber. So the inside of this represents the inside of a chamber of a 6.8. So if it, your shouldering is right, then you get it perfectly seated. Now what happens if your case sizing is off? Well, you will get something like that. Okay. Now. Neck cartridges are all basically the same. You have, this is a 223 case gauge. And these are some of my 5.56 five, rounds that uh, I load. And um, again, the theory is all the same. If you've sized and paid attention to seating depth and everything on your reloading, then your case will seat perfectly. One more, obviously, same thing, 308. All right, continue, stop beating a dead horse here. Um, so what? If you don't have a shoulder, are you going to do to keep the round in place inside the chamber? And that is done with the case mouth. And this is why you have to pay attention to crimping on straight wall cartridges. If you can see that, I don't know if you can or not, but the there is no, this is a 10 mil, one of my loads, and it has no crimp on it. There's a spear gold dot. Seated in there. And my rounds do about 1360 feet per second on average, and um, I don't crimp any of them. So crimping is not the answer to your keeping your bullet in place, proper loading technique is, is what you're looking for. So what about specialty cartridges like 
the 9 by 25 Dillon or the 357 SIG. These are pistol cartridges for a semi-automatic, but then again, they're a neck cartridge, right? So what do you do? You follow your procedures for necked cartridges. Pay attention, paying attention to when you size or resize your um, casing that uh, the shouldering and um, all of the measurements are accurate and uh, again case gauging head spacing very important especially in these high pressure um, necked pistol cartridges um, had a question posed about a nine millimeter. Is, uh, is it the same? Well, what are you looking at there? You're looking at a straight walled semi-auto round. Semi -auto round. It is going to seat off the casement. Okay, there. It's in a. Uh, You can see the case where area there is nothing holding that round in place. Yet yeah, it is seated and head spaced properly. Now how is that? That is because the case mouth on this round has no taper on it. You should be able to run your finger over the edge of a properly seated straight walled case like a 9mm, 45 ACP, 10mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, any one of those and you should be able to feel the case, head, the case mouth or the edge of the case mouth. If you can't, if it's smooth, you've crimped it too much. So why is that a big deal? If you have something like a 10 mil, okay again this is, you can see, this is another barrel, this is a KKM and it has Again, nothing holding the round at the base in place. The front of the chamber is where the support for the case happens and that's where you have to pay attention to proper sizing before loading and the biggest area that new reloaders run into problems with is the belling of a straight weld cartridge to get their powder charges in and in the beginning you'll start making these huge bells on on your cases and then um, you will uh, try to overcompensate by getting that belling off in the bullet seating stage and just over over crimp that and that is something you're going to have to really work on and try to avoid doing because if you over crimp the case mount on any straight wall case semi-automatic what you're going to wind up happening is you're going to lose the support at the end of the case there that sits up against the area in the chamber, the headspace and it's going to seat deeper Instead of, um, it's kind of awkward, but instead of seating like right there, if you have no, if you've over crimped the, ba uh, the front of that round, instead of seating here, the bullet 
the seats further into the chamber. All right. And why is that a problem? Well, there's a number of reasons why that's just a bad deal. Uh, accuracy is the least of it. Uh, it changes your your uh, accuracy on the round. And uh, most most people that are out there with these semis are buying, you know, KKMs, uh, Barstow, uh, Lone Wolf, all these aftermarket barrels um, that are advertised as match grade and this and that and thinking that their uh, accuracy is going to soar through the roof because they've got this high dollar $160, dollar barrel in their, their gun um, and you go and do something like put a bad load in there and you've just changed everything that you've spent money on. Secondly you've changed the pressure curve on, on that round. I mean, high pressure rounds like the 357 SIG, the 10 mil 40 Smith & Wesson, um, you get things going uh, the wrong way on pressures in those rounds and you're going to wind up with uh, some serious kabooms. And if you don't think that's an issue, you can do some uh, YouTube searches on uh, kabooms and you'll uh, you'll see that it is an issue. So you've got accuracy, you've got uh, safety issues, um, just a number of reasons to make sure that that area of your reloading process is, is to the tens, you know, you've got to have it right, dialed in, don't mess with it. Here's a, another couple of quick examples and then we'll Cut this short because I'm probably boring the hell out of you guys. Um, this is an example on the other side. This is obviously my Ruger 454 Casual. So this is a demonstration of what the other method of pistol cartridge seating is, and as you can see. This is a revolver. <laughs> now, this is one of my Casul rounds. And you can see, I mentioned it in previous videos on this, this round, there is a very serious crimp on this for a number of reasons. Okay. Here we have a straight weld cartridge, but it's in a different environment. Okay. This crimp is serving the main purpose of keeping this round in a high highly explosive and high recoil environment that bullet has to be tied in place very securely so we've got a crimp on a straight walled cartridge but it doesn't matter in this environment because look where the bullets support is right Huh? You, you can see that, right? The bullet at the case web is where the support is. So you don't have to worry about uh, chambering and head spacing with this if all your other um, loading techniques have been followed. So there you have it. You have um, you have the revolver round. You have your semi-auto rounds, and then as another extreme example of um, crimping and non-crimping, this is one of my Beowulf. Uh, I put together a Thor's hammer. This is an all solid brass 375 grain bullet. But uh, I think you can see no crimp. And then for those of you that are aware or know the Beowulf, it is nothing to be trifled with. 
but again, it is a semi-auto straight ball. So, I don't know if, oh, by the way, obviously at the, the soul is empty. I think I showed you that. So, I don't know if I've muddied the water or if I've just uh, made it a little clearer for some people. Uh, if you still have questions, obviously feel free to send them in. I, I don't have a problem, especially with new reloaders, uh, getting them on the right foot. It's important to uh, have fun and be safe. Okay. Desert Gold, you guys have a great Father's Day.